What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like founders you've heard of and some you've never heard of. You know, uh, before I introduce today's guest, Lee Firestone, um, who's CEO of Open Real. You know, Lee, I've had the founder of Wistia on, Chris Savage. He talked about when they were really tiny, um, how they were honest, honest to their customers to that they were tiny. Um, and I also had Pipedrive co-founder Ermas, who talks about having brain surgery getting married, moving to Estonia to the U.S. all in the same year. At the time, Pipedrive was 10,000 paying customers, and now they're over 100,000 paying customers. So check out those episodes, many more at inspiredinsider.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25, basically we help businesses and companies launch and run their podcast. And to form the relationships they should be forming, Um, because it, so it serves their business and it also serves their, the legacy. And I consider Lee, when someone produces a video and you're, you totally get this, when you produce a video, it's not just to serve the business, but you are almost, you know, providing a piece of content that is a legacy that lives on for years to come from, for you and that person. And check out my about page, you know, it, the motivation for me with podcasting comes from my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and, and they did an interview with him and his legacy lives on on my about page because of that. So check out Rise25 if you have questions about podcasting in general. Um, and Lee, I just want to give a shout out to Phil Nadell, Managing Director at Forefront Venture Partners. Yep. Um, you know, ForefrontVP.com, they invest in high growth revenue generating companies like OpenReal and Chargeback <laughs> and other companies. So I'm excited to have you. And um, also people can check out Story Cruise where Ian Garlic talks about how to market video. So when you have, use Open Reel, you can actually get the word out and market it more. So um, yep, without, um, and he, you know, Ian talks about Open Reel also um, on his, you know, on Story Cruise and he's got um, the Giants of Video Summit. He talks about Lee Firestone Open Reel. So you can check it out there too. Um, Lee Firestone, we found out, you know, that he's, we have some definite mutual interests, but um, he's CEO of OpenReal. And if you don't know OpenReal, which I've heard from some of the top video people, right now, like they can't ignore you, Lee. They can't ignore OpenReal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like before, about it. maybe they shouldn't ignore you, but now they really cannot ignore you because you're a patented remote video capture technology that allows teams to direct and capture 4K video remotely through a user's phone, which replaces the need for a video crew, a camera crew, right? Yep. You, could, you still need directed and everything like that, but it's remote. And in mm-hmm. today's day and age, now everyone's forced to go remote. And now that they're remote, they're like, why did I do anything different than remote? Um, that's that what bad. it is, that right? Was better, that was a better pitch than I've ever given, actually. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and the thing is, the pu- there's publishers, agencies, Fortune 500 companies are utilizing Open Reel's technology from client testimonials to interviews, you name it. Um, and it's a must. So you can check it out at openreel.com. Um, that's R E E L, of course, because yeah. it's obviously for filming. Um, yeah. But <laughs> Lee, thanks for joining me. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And um, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you have really i think we're at the beginning of sort of an interesting paradigm shift obviously the current situation has really accelerated everything right now um you know we had some pretty good traction prior to all this happening uh you know we patented this this technology um a few years ago or started the process to patent it got the patents maybe about a year ago um but the idea of being able to shoot this way you know i think has been on people's mind for a while and we hear a lot of uh, people coming in saying um, I've been thinking about this for a while, you know, it's cool that you guys were able to, to execute on it. Um, you know, we're excited just about the, the usage and the increase of that right now, but you made an interesting point. Um, you know, video lives on. And I think, you know, as you talk to more and more marketers and more and more publishers and broadcasters right now, just the, the amount of video that's being created and requested within and outside organizations is, 
it's significant. So, um, so yeah, it's a timely tool and, and we're excited about the trash. Yeah. I want to talk about some of the use cases of video because you serve a lot of different types of companies, you know, from agencies to publishers, to influencers, to social media. There's a lot of uses. And it's funny. I will say, you know, before we got started, we froze up a few times and you're like, that's why I use open real. <laughs> I mean, right now we're using zoom, but, um, that's why I use it, you know, but it's, um, and I also want to mention Lee, you know, you did co-found Perkplate and based on media, which was acquired. Um, and that's, you know, you could, you know, that's kind of, you have that, that really experienced background in media, even in a lot of different, um, you know, niches. But yeah. so talk about one of your favorite stories, use cases. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, so it, it's, it's actually changes probably on a weekly basis now just because of the acceleration. But I think what's exciting right now is that we have a lot of publishers and broadcasters, major corporations, major, you know, st streaming, um, uh, broadcast corporations actually shooting video of celebrities, um, you know, shows, uh, you know, I'm sure, you oh, wow. see, I'm sure you see a lot of the, you know, shows, obviously they're all trying to figure out how to capture high quality video. How are they executing on this stuff right now? Um, so I think our name has sort of been floating around in, in those circles and to be able to, um, you know, see some of the sports stars, the athletes, uh, the celebrities, uh, you know, just some of those use cases that are, are being like the shows that, you know, you watch on a Saturday night. Some of these shows are being shot with open reel right now. Right. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty exciting. You know, we we never actually intended for it to be used for that. Um, and it's funny when we first started creating this product, you know, we were looking at the iPhone and saying, oh, maybe we can get high quality out of this iPhone or, or, or you know, a smartphone and the quality. And even in the last few years of what you're able to capture now. Um, I mean, you're capturing 4K video, so, uh, you know, it just goes to show us that this is something that's sort of here to stay. Um, and the, again, the quality of video that these phones and these devices are able to capture now is production quality video. Um, and to be able to do that remotely and instead of, you know, I don't think it replaces camera crews, but to be able to use it to supplement and in, in some cases, you know, replace the need depending upon the type of, of footage is pretty exciting. And that's... I think that's the most exciting thing that we've we've had in the four years that we're, we're creating. Yeah. I mean, there's two sides of that, Lee, right? There's the quality, making sure it's quality, and then there's the economic side. Because the company's like, wait, um, I don't need to fly four people, um, put them up in a hotel, right. pay their food bills, and still get high quality video. So talk about the economics standpoint of what you know open real effects as far as that goes yeah that's i mean that's that's a great point um you know so recently we had a major athlete uh who was being recorded and uh, he's used to going into a studio or having a full crew come to his house to do really a head-on interview uh and that's thousands of dollars of time and equipment and effort uh to go and time and alone is yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, time, time alone, um, and not only the cruise time, but also his time, right? To have this, you know, these people in his house or in his backyard or wherever they're doing it and setting it up, and he's there. It's hours of time, you know. With our technology, he was able to, you know, put a tripod, put the phone in there, um, get the lighting right, and shoot a take and and be done in thirty minutes. Uh, so something that was thousands of dollars previously is now, you know, maybe a hundred dollars to do that shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's a significant time, time savings, but yeah, the, on the economic side, it's, it's significant. So to shoot the same quality video, like a 4k video, what is a typical camera from like a, a crew? What are they using? Is that, I'm not yeah, familiar I mean, with the cost of like, okay, you can get this camera or, and how, if people are like, Lee, how can you even use this? Like someone's holding the one, I picture one of those big things that like, right. you know, I'm in Chicago, the Bulls games are like filming the game compared to, oh, you just have a phone. How is that shooting high quality video? Yeah, definitely. I mean, listen, they're using DSLRs or red cams or, you know, these high end cameras that are in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars. And not to, you know, not to say that, you know, we're capturing the same exact quality as a $50,000 quality. That's a uh, <laughs> camera that's not happening. Um, but you are capturing 4k video and especially with the new phones right now, um, just the quality that they're able to capture and the depth 
um, is just getting that much that much better. So, I mean, if you look at the back of any of these phones, if you're shooting out of the back camera, and in some instances, the front camera of any of these phones, I mean, you're you're really capturing amazing quality video. How did you meet Phil? I mean, I think I cold emailed Phil. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you say? Um, so <laughs> I, you know, I had been following Forefront for a while. Um, you know, obviously in, in raising money, you know, you're looking, you know, at a lot of different people. Uh, I checked out Phil's syndicate. He's one of the most, one of the most well-known syndicates on AngelList. Um, and he's just got a phenomenal portfolio. Um, and I was speaking to some of the, the founders, uh, uh, you know, his portfolio companies and, um, you know, I ended up just sort of reaching out and saying, Hey, you know, this is, you know, we're raising right now and would love to just at least have the conversation. And we had a number of conversations. Um, Bill's a very detailed guy and he, he really dug in, which I appreciated. I uh, took the, took the time and it was a great process. Um, and he's been just a huge asset to us so far. How are publishers using you? Yeah, so uh, you have publishers, obviously, with um, in a number of different verticals, uh, whether they're just general media publishers um, or they're specific vertical publishers. But what they're doing is um, they're interviewing talent, uh, they're interviewing thought leaders with it, um, they're capturing a number of different types of stories with it. You know, all this video content that they were creating previous, again, with all these other methods we were talking about, uh, they're utilizing open reel and they're just able to listen the content today is um it's good for an hour it's good for a day it goes you know it's it's it, it goes very quickly so this is just a tool i think that they're utilizing to be able to spin up new content in a pretty consistent basis uh and do it you know at at scale and do it pretty quickly so that's that's how they're utilizing it um you know so what's you know um Lee, what's the most common most popular use of open reel. Yeah, so I think there's two different sides to it. I think you have your corporate side. So you have a lot of internal communications. Uh, there's a lot of thought leadership video. There's a lot of training videos, educational videos that happen within the organization, within these large enterprise organizations where- What would be an example of that? Uh, yeah, so um, let's say uh, I just did a new product re product release within an organization and I mm. want to be able to uh, record the, uh, the head of engineering talking about that product release. Uh, you know, and they they want to sort of do a screen share along with capturing, you know, capturing the video. And again, that's not UGC self-captured, but you have a marketing team who wants, or an internal comms team who wants to be able to direct that initiative. Uh, so they, you know, pair to that person's device, uh, the head of engineering can, you know, walk through the new product update. It's captured in a, in a higher quality way, something that's able to be distributed across the organization. Um, and that's a, that's a good idea of how companies are using it internally. They're also using it for social and external as well. But on the corporate side, you know, that's really one of the major use cases. And then is, is like that, as far as like we, we mentioned a little bit, cause people ask me all the time when we're working with their podcasts, like how do I get a higher quality video? They're using zoom. And, um, is that why people are choosing open one of the reasons why, or what's the, What's the reason why people are like, yeah, what? Uh, well, let's just go with open reel. Yeah, sure. So I, I think it's, I think it's twofold. Number one, you definitively have a, a better quality, right? So video conferencing technologies are built for streaming. They're built so that we can talk to one another uh, in real time and it n not to drop off. It doesn't need to be higher quality 4K, 1080 video as long as we can really see each other clearly, have a conversation. That's you know that works. So there are a lot of people who are use, using these technologies to record video. Um, but again, they're beholden to the internet connection. Uh, like we had before, you have a pause or a stop. Um, it's not capturing always the best audio. So for something that needs to be recorded in higher quality, that's going to you know, be evergreen and live on a consistent basis, it's not always the best technology to do that for. That's where our technology sort of comes in. Um, and with our tech, obviously, you can capture it locally. You're capturing the, the full quality. The second side of that is the directing piece, right? So uh, we've heard from a lot of organizations and a, and a lot of publishers, a lot of broadcasters, they influencers, they ask people for UGC or user generated content, right? So uh, that's, you know, me standing here sort of with the phone or I'm sitting in front of my computer. Uh, yeah. And there's a couple issues with that. Number one, I'm not always getting the type as the marketer. or the I can see a million issues with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's, there's actually, you know, we've seen videos sort of up people's nose. It's, it, you know, it doesn't always come out the right way. Um, so it's the directing, it's the controlling capability, right? To be able to 
see what the other person is doing and direct them and, mm. you know, sort of guide them along uh, and, and again, capture that. And again, not only the other side of it is be able to get that content in your hands in real time is a, uh, is a huge benefit. So I think the control of it and to be able to drive those initiatives is the other side. What's the biggest question people have? And they're like, okay, I'm thinking of open real. I'm not sure. What's like the biggest thing holding people back? Uh, so listen, it's, a, it's definitively a, it's, it's a premium product, right? So um, you have video conferencing technologies that, um, you know, that you can get for 15 or 20 bucks a month. You know, the, the pricing is a little bit higher. Um, you know, again, it's a patented technology. It's, it's something that people use to, to get quality. So, you know, the pricing, again, I think is, is, a little, is a little bit higher. You really need to, and we really qualify. We really want to have people who have a consistent use case um, and they're, they're creating a lot of video in the organization. Um, so that's one. And then, you know, the other thing I think is just, um, you know, it's what are they using it for and how often are they using it? Do they have an initiative? And early on, we weren't seeing that as much, you know, 16, 17, early 18. And then there was sort of this shift in, in sort of 2018 um, when we really started licensing the technology out. We, we saw this really big shift to video in, in companies and organizations. Um, and I think at that point, you really saw people move over and say, okay, we need to have a video strategy. Like a lot of companies previous to that, you know, if you look at the metrics on it, didn't even have video, video strategies. It was like, hey, let's create a testimonial video and throw it up on the site. Now it's like, hey, if you don't have video on an ongoing basis in your organization, whether that's of internal, external employees, whatever the case is, um, you know, people forget very quickly. So I, I think that's, you know, I, th I think that was holding people back and now it's shifted and now people are moving towards it. Totally. Like an ongoing video strategy. I mean, I don't know what remotely builds better trust and credibility than a video of someone talking. Yeah. I mean, you could read something, you could listen to someone, but when you see them and you see the nonverbal communication with the verbal and, the, you know, them in general, there's nothing that beats that. You know, absolutely. absolutely. What's, sure. what's the, you know, talk about video strategy. What are some things that work you've seen companies do that work with video strategy? Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I, what's interesting is a lot of people want to do key opinion leader content, which I think is a, is a great strategy, right? But I think a lot of organizations are not looking internal to the company. Like the value that your, that your team and your leadership can provide in talking about your product and their expertise, uh, totally. again, whatever that is, is huge. You know, a lot of people, a lot of companies are not doing that, right? Or they're keeping it internal to the organization. There's so much value in, in your expertise, in your company. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of that now and a lot more like, you know, there, there are professionals in these companies, like employees that are pros at what they do. Yeah. And they have all this insight. And if you look at LinkedIn, like we're starting to see some more of it. And again, I, I really think we're at this sort of inflection point now where you're going to see a flood and, and you know, again, it's, it's really bad timing with everything that's going on, but it's forcing us into sort of this remote nature right now. And I think part of that you're going to see as part of that is a huge push in a, in a lot of video and a lot of video being done internal to the organization that gets shared to their customer base and external. Yeah, that's a good point, Lee, because it's underutilized. The team's underutilized. And, and also, why put the full brunt of the effort and energy on the maybe the CEO to do this when he is or she has experts under them who are doing this? You know, and so let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> Joe Matthew, right, CTO, talk about his expertise and what he's done. Yep. Yeah, sure. Because I'm sure this is like heavy technology stuff. So I don't even know. I want to know what goes into this. And <laughs> yeah, I'm sure definitely. Joe knows the ins and outs. But talk about talk about him and his expertise. So I'm not going to step too far because so I'll get yelled at. Um, I want you to get yelled at. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, no, kidding. So uh, listen, Joe, you know, Joe and myself early on really kind of thought about the idea behind this. But him and his, and his team were able to execute on this technology. And it's definitively not simple technology to be able to, you know, keep this stream going, capture something locally, pull it off a device, um, be able to control robust video controls on a device. Um, you know, we have a webcam side and we have a, 
a phone side. Um, but to be able to control frames per second, exposure, resolution, start and stop, roll a teleprompter on, on a screen, do this all remotely uh, and be able to sort of packet that up and, and send it to the cloud. I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying it here, but um, you know, we have a dev team now of, of 12 people uh, that you know, this is all they work on all day long is keeping this thing stable, uh, adding feature sets to it. Um, so they've done a pretty amazing. I can't job. even imagine because of all the de <clears throat> devices that are out. There. I mean, there's so many different iterations of like, or what people can be using, what kind of devices. It's like, yeah. forget it. I'd be like, yeah. I give up, throw my hands up, forget it. It's not even worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's and what's exciting? I think was exciting, and they're one of the challenges they've had especially in the last three months. I mean, in the last three months, we've seen a 500% increase in the amount of videos being recorded through our technology. Um, you know, so we've scaled that, scaled that team up and just some of the, you know, listen, obviously some of the challenges they've had, which they've done an amazing job in, in executing on it is number one, scaling the platform to be able to handle that, uh, you know, thousands of connections potentially at, at, at a time. Um, and then on the other side, just the feature set, right? So we were talking about uh, recording celebrities, recording broadcasts. Um, you have legitimate production people coming and using our technology now. They have a ton of new feature sets and ideas around what this should be and how it should execute. So, um, you know, they've done an amazing job in, in being able to spin that stuff up and scale it up quickly. Um, where did the idea come from? The idea for Open Real, yeah, the remote capture. Yeah, it's a it's a great question. So, you know, I have, I have a background in in medical marketing. Uh, previously, started a company years ago. Uh, that we had for a num number of years, and um, you know, it, it was sold. That's to a base stone media. That was base stone media, yeah. correct? Yep. Yeah. And it, uh, in, in 2013, we sold that company, and uh, a few years later, uh, we had the idea to create sort of a medical video platform that was all video of doctors uh, talking about conditions um, and opinions and etc. So we were running around New York City, sort of shooting. Uh, video with camera crews and we said this is sort of crazy. We can't scale this and we ended up looking at the iPhone and saying maybe there's a way for us to Control this and everybody's got this uh, Everyone's got this device or a smartphone. Everyone's got this device. Maybe we can remote into that and uh, It took us quite a while to build the technology uh, but we ended up building sort of a, an MVP of it and Used it to end up shooting about 3,000 4,000 videos of doctors early on uh, so that's where the idea sort of came from. And then from that, um, you know, I remember I was speaking at an event and a, a company or two came up to me and said, hey, can we use this? We have use case for it. And we pivoted over to sort of this licensing model um, and we haven't looked back and that's sort of where the business is today. Talk about the licensing part of it for people. Sorry? Talk about the licensing part. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so the licensing part of it. So in essence, we're a SaaS company um, subscription model. Uh, you know, we, you know, we license this technology to companies um, on a subscription basis. Uh, there's full onboarding, there's full training, uh, you know, there's full support, even in, in shoot support, uh, you know, if, if they need that. So we're in essence creating uh, experts on these training and, and through this onboarding process. And we're letting them, so we're not actually the one shooting the video. We're giving them the technology to shoot the video. Uh, so we have, you know, thousands mm -hmm. of users of, uh, you know, people uh, recording these, these videos. Um, and yeah, they, they handle it all themselves. And it's an interesting point because, so we have this collaborator feature uh, where basically uh, you have a director, but you could have up to four people join in a shoot and be as stakeholders and be able to watch and comment on the shoot. So, you know, that's another interesting feature uh, that allows people to really scale within their organization and capture the right footage at the right time. Uh, and if one of those seats needs to be us helping out with a shoot, um, you know, we, we support that as well. So the idea for the licensing portion was just people at use cases, they were approaching you to say, hey, can we use this also? And then the light bulb went on? That was really sort of, so that was really the inflection point for us is saying, you know, this is a cool concept. Um, it was hard to pivot away from that concept, but we saw the, the broader use case here. Of every company really should be, have this tool in house and being able to sort of scale video. And again, we were a little bit early at that point. Um, it's come full circle now, but that was really the light bulb moment to, to say, okay, this is, this is the business. This is really where it scales and this is where it starts to, to take off. And, um, 
you know, it's been a bit of a long road to get here, but uh, now we're really starting starting to see some significant growth. Yeah. What's so? I forgot the definition of luckily. It's like opportunity meets hard work or something. So it's like there is some luck involved sometimes with timing of things, you know, and technology, especially with you. You need a phone to. I mean, you need a tech, certain technology to be up to snuff for people to use what you have, right? Yeah. So in in the beginning, that was sort sort of part of the problem, right? Whereas the technology wasn't there to be able to capture the quality of video. We were sort of ahead of it. Um, and we were waiting for some of this technology in terms of the cameras on these on these devices and webcams and phones to catch up, and it it did so very rapidly, um, which was which was great for us. Uh, but yeah, now we're seeing it's a bit of a bet early on, especially when you're early on in technology, right? Yeah, it was. It it definitely was a bet. I mean, listen, we saw we definitely saw it coming. We, you know, it was we we knew it was we knew it was on the way. We just didn't know how long, uh, and I think that's why we you know we sold this idea to um, one of our earliest investors was Brooklyn Bridge Ventures um, here in New York um, and Alpine Meridian Ventures here in New York and and uh, you know Bill and Charlie the, these guys took a took a gamble on us uh, early on and um, you know they were huge assets they were patient with us they were patient with the technology they knew it was coming and uh, you know to be at this point where where it's finally sort of come to fruition it's um, yeah it was it was an interesting bet early on for sure so Lee, you work with Joe with Baystone Media. Is that how you know each other? Yeah. So Joe, uh, yeah, Joe ran uh, our product uh, and ops at Baystone. I want to talk about the Baystone days for a second because sure. you know I'm sure it's easier for these these um, companies to invest in a proven founder who has an exit. Um, what are some of the what were some of the high points and maybe challenges of Baystone Media, and then you eventually sold it. Yeah, sure. So uh, that was that's an that's an interesting interesting question. So based on we were a little bit early also on also. So at the time we were doing sort of templated websites, uh, templated newsletters, um, and you know everybody was out there sort of creating doing video, uh, sorry, doing websites for like three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars a piece and, and up. And we sort of came out with this subscription model early on. Mm. Um, I remember it was. Like, I remember one of your companies. It was online Cairo. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I remember it. It was a subscription base, right? And so you pay a monthly fee, but you get the template and it's almost kind of like hosting with design in one, right? Yep, exactly. So we, you know, we were early to that. We were, I think in the beginning we were charging like 29 bucks a month and then it was 39 bucks a month and we stuck with that model. And, uh, and again, it was just sort of a scale model and it was all within you know, dental and Cairo were large, you know, largely, but uh, you know, a number of other verticals, but you know, I, I think with technology in and of itself, you know, it's very, and it's, it's gotten so much more saturated. If you're not trying to disrupt something early on, and if you can't look out a few years, um, it's hard. And especially even back then, I think we're moving so much slower, but today, you know, these development teams and these technology professionals are, are so talented and the technology is there that, you know, ideas hit them, hit the market. And then within a month later, there's, you know, 10 clones of it. Um, so I just, I think it's just a, it's really tough to try and disrupt these days and tough to come up with an idea and, and, and fill a gap. With, with based on talk about some, you know, customer acquisition is key. You guys had a lot of customers. How did you break it in the market? How, what was the, the best way that you were able to acquire customers? Yeah, sure. Back, back then, um, we were, it's funny, we were doing print. <laughs> we were direct mail. You know, yeah, we were doing direct mail. We were doing, um, you know, we ran some ads in some of the, the industry magazines. That was actually our best source of, of leads back then. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. What would you send in direct mail? Like a postcard or what would you send? Yeah, sure. I'd send a postcard. I'm sure I've received your postcards. I'm sure. <laughs> we, were talking about, we were talking about, I'm a huge fan of chiropractic. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we were doing postcards. We were doing direct mail. We were doing like full page ads. Um, and even up through near towards the end, that was still our best source of mm. leads. Shout out to alwaysdirectmail.com, uh, actually in their podcast. They, they do that for companies, actually, um, for businesses. But um, so what was the offer? What worked? What was the offering in the maybe full page or the postcard? 
back then. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we were, you know, we were doing sort of no setup um, and like, uh, you know, it was 39 a month back, back then, uh, you know, so we were, we were just running pretty aggressive deals back then to get, to get people in. And, um, you know, and again, I, I think very similar to, to open real. And I've always been, a, I've always been a huge believer in this. I think, I think the idea of, you know, customer service and client success is huge in companies, right? So, um, you know, even back then, you know, we would, we would really make sure if you needed help with your website, you know, we were, we were on top of it. Um, and even today with the videos, uh, if you're in the middle of a shoot, like our response time is mm. ne near immediate, right. To be able to, you're doing a shoot, you're doing a video, you have a problem or you have a question, like one of our support team will get on the shoot with you, help you out, make sure everything is going smoothly. So I think back then and today, you know, I think a little, a little bit of that's been lost in, in technology in, in general. People just want to go digital and, and there's a, that touch, I mean, obviously it's in, it's in your DNA to open real because you, you do one-on-one -on -one personal communication via video, but, but still the emphasis on support. Yeah, like live I think, support. I think, it's, and yeah, I just think, you know, and again, maybe that's just in my DNA and sort of, you know, my background, but we want to make sure that companies are comfortable using the technology. Um, you know, at some point they sort of go off on their own and, and they become experts and pros and they, they can handle 99% of, of the technology. But um, to be able to support people and support our clients the right way is sort of a, yeah. it's, I think it's been a huge differentiator for our client base. Um, and I think that's also why we get a lot of word of mouth. So Lee, how do you hire a good support team? What do you look for for, for a good support person? Yeah. So for us, it's, for us, it's follow up and sense of urgency. That's, those are the two things that we look for, right? So even during an interview process, um, you know, we have an ad, we have an interview. It's how quickly are they following up? Uh, are they following up again? You know, how passionate are they about the, about the job and, and what they're doing? And we recently have increased our, our support team, We've actually tripled our support team. Wow. Um, and we have people sort of all over the country now. Uh, you know, again, we're, we're really working remotely, but um, this, they have a very specific background, right? They have a technical background. They have a video background. We're really looking for people who uh, you know, are passionate about video, passionate about technology, and, and just really are excited about the tech, this technology in and of itself. And that's, that's who we're looking for. That's, you know, that's who we found have been pretty amazing. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that Lee. And first of all, thanks for sharing and taking the time to, to share some of the, the journey with us. Um, I've two last questions, but I want to point people towards openreal.com. Check it out anywhere else. We should point people towards online Lee, that would be helpful for them and for open real. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think if you, if you go to, if you go to open real, um, and you, you can take a look at the technology, obviously take a look at, um, some of the videos and, and the capability uh, that the technology has, uh, it's expanding all the time. We're actually in the process of releasing, uh, an, another product, which is sort of a self capture, uh, technology along with a remote capture, uh, to support both sides. Cause we're getting a lot of interest on that side as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I would just go to openreal.com and, um, you know, obviously the LinkedIn pages, um, and the Instagram pages um, at Open Real Video, and you can sort of see what people are creating and some of our content. Um, yeah, you could use your phone, your tablet, or your or your computer to yep. capture this. Yep, exactly. Yep. And, uh, and another component of that is it's global, right? So you can record video nearly anywhere in the world. So that's another thing. We have a ton of multinationals, a uh, ton of companies in in other countries that are recording the recording video from that country or recording again in other places in the world. And when you talk about the cost and expense, that's a, that's a huge benefit as well. So how should podcasters be using open rail or is it maybe not the best use case? Yeah. So we not everyone does video, but I do. And, and I know a bunch of people who do. Yeah, definitely. So we, we have, you know, we have a number of podcasters um, who are, who are looking at using the technology. So there's something that we have called multicam as well. So you, you can record up to four devices at once. Uh, so if you're talking about a, a podcast, again, whether they're in the same place or not in the same place, um, you can record both, you know, both feeds. Uh, you can talk back and forth like this and again, capture it in up to, up to 4k quality. So yeah, nice. definitely capability as well. So last two questions, Lee, I always ask since this is Spartan Insider is what's been a low 
point or moment in your entrepreneurial journey? And on the flip side, what's been a proud moment on your entrepreneurial journey? What's been a low point that you had to push through? Is like, you know, because we hear the the up stories, but oftentimes there's a lot of stuff we don't hear about with the challenges. Sure. So, you know, the, I, I, on on the on the low side, I would say there, there's two pieces. Um, you know, after we you know we uh, exited the last company, you know, you're as an entrepreneur, you're you know you're sort of excited that that you sort of finished this journey. There's obviously that feeling of um, you know this ended, and that's sort of that's sort of sad. And then it's getting to the next phase of what are you going to do next? And, you know, there's obviously a ton of serial entrepreneurs out there, um, but really trying to figure out what you're doing next. And, um, you know, early, especially in the beginning of starting a new company, um, you know, we bootstrapped this company in the beginning before we raised capital. And um, it's hard, you know, it took us probably a year to, to get something going again. And, those early days are, are tough. It's like, you're like, why am I doing this again? Like, what, am I doing? What, what am I doing? And um, to yeah. any entrepreneur out there, you know, mm. I think if you have an idea, if you have something that you're really passionate about and you can have a market, you know, really a true market need for it, um, mm. you just got to stick with it. You know, I think that's the, the, the moral. What kept you going for that year? It was like, ah, oh, forget it. Like, you know, in that year when you're, you know, and, and some people it's longer, they don't yeah. get traction for, for longer. What do you think of to continue to push forward? Yeah. So listen, I think you sort of have to have this North, North star. Like this is the idea. This is what, this is what we want to build. And this is, we see this as a huge opportunity. And the other side of it is having a good co-founder, right? So they're going through the same thing as you are. Um, it's, it's nearly impossible to do this stuff alone. So if you don't have a good team around you, if you don't have a good co-founder, um, it's going to be really difficult because you know you bounce off mm-hmm. each other um, when you have your your highs and lows, and it's a roller coaster. Yeah, listen, every day, even now, is a roller coaster. Uh, and even sort of two years into this, even after we raised, you know, we were we were getting close to running out of capital, and that's that was a scary time for us. Um, and just recently, we were able to raise uh, another round in November from Las Olas Venture Capital. Um, who again sort of believed in the in the idea and believed in the vision with us, um, so that was a, like a huge win for us, and it was a you know it was a decent amount of capital that allowed us to really scale the company and grow. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's a roller coaster, and uh, you know you really just need to be able to handle the high. It's not the for the highs. faint of heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we're we're super excited about it. And um, I what about I, proud I, moment? Yeah. So um, listen, proud moment is. Um, to be able to see some of the names, you know, without naming names uh, right now. Do, do anyone give you rights to say their name on their platform or is it because of licensing, it's kind of anonymous? Yeah, we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of the confidentiality um, yeah. in, our, in our agreements. Uh, but for I'm going to keep uh, guessing until you smile. Like <laughs> Saturday Night Live, The Daily Show. No, <laughs> Close, very good. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, listen, it's, it's amazing four years later to be able to, to say like, these major organizations, these major Fortune 500 companies, these huge media conglomerates are, you know, you can say these names and everyone knows them that are using your technology. Yeah. Uh, and this is the go-to right now for how you shoot video. Um, it's, it's an amazing feeling and our team is ecstatic about it. And we, you know, we talk about it all the time. It's like just an amazing thing. So Lee, excited. when you graduated from University of Florida Gators, what did you want to do? Did you know you want to start your own company or? Uh, I always thought, you know, so my father was an entrepreneur um, mm. and, you know, what I did he had, do? so uh, he was in the optical business um, and a number of other businesses and he owned, uh, you know, he ran a number of those companies um, and he owned stores and, and uh, you know, he was, he was an executive mm-hmm. uh, in, in that industry. Um, but yeah, so I'll tell you a quick funny story before we go. So, yeah. You know, in, at University of Florida, I, uh, my, my first business there, my first business idea was I decided that I was going to have like a, a coupon book, right? So I, I ran around to sort of all the bars and restaurants and I, and I got deals and I got deals from them and, and I put together this book. It was called like, um, it's called like Gator Bucks or something like that, whatever I called it back then. And uh, I, I ran around trying to sell the book to 
you know, to college students and it failed miserably. Um, and what I realized is I should have been charging the restaurants and bars and not the college students. <laughs> uh, but even and back did then, you pivot that to that I, or no? No, we, I, I didn't. You know, the funny thing is some of my relatives started Clipper magazine. I don't know if you heard of it. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. And they started it. That's how they started it. Um, Clipper magazine. And Amazing. they ended up selling it to um, the Gannett com media company. Sure. Um, but that's what they did. That's how they started running that's, around college campuses. Exactly the same thing. That's very interesting. I, yeah. You know, I, back then, I mean, this is, this is 2000. You were like, right. You were so close. Like so you were close. right there. <laughs> you were right there. I've missed like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I think even back then I, I wanted to always sort of um, be an entrepreneur um, for better, or for worse and uh, run companies and sort of start companies and execute on vision. And, yeah. and um, sometimes there's ups, sometimes there's downs, but um, we got something pretty. There's always those, you know, we'll call them learning and not failure, but there's always those learning companies along the way. Oftentimes you go, Oh yeah, it's like a 10 year success overnight. Right. Because you know, you had all these, little companies that build into bigger and bigger companies. So yeah. Lee, I totally appreciate you sharing your story. Everyone should check out open real open and then R E E L.com. And uh, thanks again. Yeah. Listen, it's been amazing. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.